hello you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Stetarguskash, Honey Stoker, a fortress that had once existed as a small group of dwarves devoted to the beekeeping industry that was then turned into a dark experiment by the wild boar man Moses Tezashragoth, an experiment that involved turning this small population into vampires. Through the use of a tainted well, polluted with the foul blood of a vampiric goblin. The year is 292, and it has taken 20 long years to reach this pivotal point, a point where it is finally revealed whether or not the experiment was a success or utter failure. And alas, the well has failed. All of the preparations and grooming have been for naught, and the dwarves of Little Honeystoker are not pleased. Not at all, but by far, the dwarf most displeased with the wild boar man's antics is Atir Momaztanam, the longtime leader and vampiric mayor of Honeystoker, a dwarf that has long felt stifled by Moses, a dwarf who highly values her independence and would much rather see all tyrants toppled. But in a world ruled over by the demon king Gugo Uzburial, the wild boar man has seemed the lesser of two evils. Till now, that is. Moses' bumblings have cost far too much time. Time that the dwarves of Honeystoker could have been using to forge weapons and armor, to train their fighting skills, and to think of bigger, greater plans on how to survive in a demon-controlled future. But now the dwarves and the Nazu Sheb of Honeystoker, for the first time since the fortress's founding, can see things clearly. And although the scraped chambers are terribly weak, the future is one that will be forged in dwarven steel, and it will not be one wrought of vampiric blood, even if that future is woefully uncertain. Recently, the dwarves of Honeystoker have begun resuming a normal dwarven existence, happily laboring here in the fortress, trying to improve things the best they can, while still following the commands of their Nazu Sheb leaders. The stinging hallway with its copper spikes is coming right along, nearly halfway done now. More and more wild boar piglets are born every day, and masterfully trained by Saxel, the fortress's animal trainer. Work continues down here in the mines, where copper ore has been particularly scarce in recent days. We're still very busy at work up here collecting plants to brew into drinks, because we've still yet to receive a trading caravan, and we haven't received one in about five years I think. But our most ambitious project of recent days is down here, carved into the white quartzite caverns beneath the fortress. The dwarves down here are busy at work preparing a grand suite for the wild boar man Moses, in the hopes that one day he will come to our tiny fortress and grace us with his presence, in a more permanent fashion. In the past, Moses has turned down our offers to live here in Honeystoker, amongst his loyal subjects. And so it's our hope to prepare a setting so finely appointed that even that wily wild boar man's acutely refined tastes could not hope to turn down our offer. Although the motives behind the carving of this grand abode are not quite as pure as would first appear. The true function of the grand pale citadel carved beneath our humble fortress is as a trap a trap devised by none other than Atir, Mayor of Honeystoker. Her true goal is to imprison the wild boar man. When Moses is finally lured into Honeystoker, and he will be lured here, those quartzite chambers will become his prison. And until the end of time, the weight of Honeystoker will rest upon his shoulders. Though Mayor Atir would do well to remember that not all of Honeystoker's dwarves would be so quick to betray their former master. Their lives in Honeystoker were only made possible through his support, and trickery or not, whatever future now lay ahead of them was given as a gift by Moses. Ah yes, here we are, back in Honeystoker, and it is high time to get back down to business. No more horsing around trying to get vampire dwarves. As I had just said, we're still trying to get these quartzite chambers here ready to go. Things have to be just perfect if we're going to have any hope of luring Moses here. And pretty much the last thing we're going to have to do is get a bunch of furniture in place. And that is coming right along. Shouldn't take too much longer, I don't think. And in addition to that, we are still trying to form the Tower of Memories into a more impressive state. 
I know it's not the plan to house vampires here anymore, but it still is certainly is not going to hurt to have an enormous citadel poking up out of the swamp here. Every proper dwarven fortress needs an impressive landmark, and ours is going to be the Tower of Memories. Yes, it will definitely be a thing of beauty when it's done. Oh, what's this here? Huh, some migrants have arrived. <laughs> Very interesting. It looks like it worked. Hmm. Anyways, we haven't had a migrant wave in quite some time. Let's see what we got. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven dwarves. Fantastic. Wow, you know, that really is something. A couple weaponsmiths, farmers, butchers. <laughs> wow, that is really good, actually. And that brings us up to 42 dwarves, which I'm pretty sure is the highest our population's ever been. Yeah, that's just great. That's stupendous. Well, make yourselves at home. Not terribly certain how you found out about the place, but we're glad to have you here. Man, I couldn't even tell you how excited I am about that. We have not had a proper migrant wave in quite a few years now, actually, and I don't know why they decided to show up now, but with all the recent work that's been going on, it certainly will be good to have- uh, Did you feel that? The very earth itself is quaking. That could only mean one thing. It is said that when the rocks beneath our feet shake of their own accord, that it is the doing of Iphen, goddess of nature, hammering on her great anvil of soil and stone. But those dwarves brave enough to traverse the narrow tunnels that wend through the Earth's flesh know better. For it is the demence of towering forgotten beasts, creatures of an unknown age, unparalleled in size, and forgotten even by the gods. The forgotten beast Mosos has come, a great scaly lobster. It has large mandibles and it squirms in fidgets. Its black scales are jagged and close set. Beware, it's deadly dust. <laughs> well, you know, that is something right there. This terrifying creature is currently locked down in the caverns, the quartzite caverns, away from our dwarves, thankfully. Although it should be noted that it does have access to all of the cavern layers. All of the caverns in our immediate vicinity are connected by tunnels, which is kind of bad news. I don't know when we're gonna be able to get out there again. I'll tell you. As it is, we still have Tithleth over here, the emaciated, trunkless goose with deadly blood, which is not a trait to be taken lightly, by the way. Tithleth is still standing guard by this forgotten beast corpse over here, the spider it had killed. And on top of that, there is actually a third forgotten beast down in the caverns as well, one that had popped up when I was doing that intro piece. And uh, I wasn't really going to make a big deal of it because it's not going to cause us any trouble. But since we're doing forgotten beasts, what the hell, it's just so hard to resist. The beast that slithers before us, down in the lowest caverns beneath Honeystoker, is known as Siga, a great hairy snail. It has thin wings of stretched skin and it undulates rhythmically. Its clear hair is long and shaggy. Beware, its poisonous bite. Yes, another distressingly terrifying one to look at, to be sure. But as far as forgotten beasts go, a poisonous bite really isn't that big of a deal. Certainly not when compared to deadly blood and dust. That being said, this creature still has a potential of doing a fair amount of damage. Not to be taken too lightly. Now I'm going to be keeping my eye out, and it is my hope that eventually two of these creatures will meet, and will then fight to the death. I really want to see that. Keep your ears to the ground, dwarves, and remain very aware of any tremors you sense, for it may be the violent thrashing of these creatures locked in the throes of deadly combat. I really don't want to miss it. <laughs> but yeah, for now, I suppose we'll just get back to work here in the fortress. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, that was... <laughs> hmm. Another extremely quick battle there. Wow, what the hell? I, I mean, I'm talking seriously here. I had unpaused the game after that for like maybe 15 seconds. I'm alerted that there's combat, and I look up here and see this. Our resident trunkless goose is standing triumphant over yet another dead forgotten beast. Mosos the lobster. How stupid is that? Well, having a look at the combat here, and it's kind of difficult to see what happened exactly. Mostly because there's a lot of this uh, forgotten beast kicks the forgotten beast in the upper leg, so I don't know exactly who's doing what to who, which kind of stinks. But I suppose we'll just assume that Mosul's got the worst of it. Certainly seems to be the case anyways. Well, good job, Tithlef. Oh, ooh, Tithlef, who just fell unconscious and is now laying on the ground and died too. Well, that's something right there. Must be from that deadly dust. Huh, you know what? Those two are the most worrying forgotten beasts. By a stretch. 
And I suppose if the only other one out there is a Sega down here, the hairy snail, then we might be able to go out there and uh, kind of block it up or something, you know? It would be pretty nice if our vampires had access to the caverns again. And so, Nezusheb, let's pull this lever here and get back out into those caverns. I think we have a pretty good chance now of blocking up that third cavern layer. And there we go. And now we just once again have to try to build a floor over this downward tunnel here, which shouldn't be a big deal, as long as Sega down here behaves himself. Looks to be the case. And there we go. Fantastic. So now the lower caverns are blocked up, and that Forgotten Beast cannot get to us. So it looks like we have a little bit of time here. I'm curious if we could block up portions of this cavern layer, just to make them a bit safer, you know? Let's get straight to it, vampires. Now this is going to be a gigantic undertaking, but I'm going to try my best to get these three vampires to wall off a gigantic portion of these quartzite caverns. We certainly don't want to deal with any more Forgotten Beast intrusions. Goddamn dangerous, I'll tell ya. You know, and while we're still on the subject of the Nazu Sheb, it should also be noted that some of the dwarves really are unhappy with the failure of the vampire well. Young Moldaf here in particular, a sponsored dwarf. And after all that build-up, it doesn't look like he's willing to accept the fact that he cannot be a vampire. He keeps saying we just have to try again. It'll be different. That the damn goblin down there just has to be stabbed a few more times. And it's starting to irritate some of the others who are trying their best to dissuade him from this madness, but to no avail. We're going to be keeping eyes on him just to make sure there's no trouble, and I certainly hope he eventually settles down. Settle down, Moldy. Ah, you know what, actually, I don't think there could be a more perfect nickname for the guy. And so, little Moldaf, you have just earned yourself the nickname Moldy, which is a horrible nickname, but I'm sure the other dwarves just use it lovingly. <laughs> oh, youth. Oh, damn it. We had a bit of an accident here up on the surface during construction of one of the new towers here. Not too sure what happened exactly, but as you can see, Doran, our butcher here, has been knocked unconscious, and down below, we did lose a dwarf. And that dwarf is Saxel, our animal trainer, our one animal trainer. That's a damn shame right there, I'll tell you. Not a dwarf that's gotten very much attention, but honestly, one of my favorites. She's the one who trained all of our wild boars and our Kias, too. Oh, oh man, you gotta be kidding me here. We have two other dead dwarves as well. Id, the milker, one of the new migrants, as well as Meng, one of the merchants, both down here in our kitchen. And unfortunately, this wasn't any big accident. No, these two were killed by Aban Tanarith, right down here. He's one of our miners, and he's been with the fortress since the very beginning. I think he's one of the first dwarves to have shown up here. And the guy has just started being in a foul mood. I really didn't think he'd take it this far so quickly. Well, I didn't want to throw him out of the fortress because his wife lives here too, and they would both end up leaving. But, I mean, you can't kill two dwarves and get away with it, my friend. We could punish him, but that's not going to solve much. I mean, he'd still be miserable. Yeah, I'm just throwing him out. <sighs> Damn shame. So in a matter of moments, we just lost five dwarves. Wow, that is just wild. Yeah, sorry, Aban. You and Udib have to leave. Yeah, it's a damn shame, but it's just something you have to do. We can't have dwarves killing other dwarves in the fortress. Especially not these days when we're trying to get back up on our feet. Ugh, and what's this here? A goblin snatcher. Annoying. Alright, um, she's not equipped with any weapon at all. And so, we're just gonna send the dwarves out and get this over with quickly. And she's being chased off. All over the place, she's in a panic. Running down towards the Tower of Memories. Oh, and there we go. Easy enough. Killed by Id Eurystvath Sith. Our mechanic slash fortress leader. Good job, dude. And with that, taking a look at our calendar here, it is the 12th of Limestone, early autumn. Which means, of course, it's time for the Autumn Festival. Which would be nice, I think. After all the recent trauma that it is. I'll tell you, I want to think that things are going pretty well here in the fortress, but... I don't know. It's just we have dwarves dying, our vampire well plans have failed, and I'm noticing more and more upset dwarves. Which is really getting me down. Uh oh, but what is this? The Dwarven Wagons have returned. Oh wow, that is amazing. We haven't had traders here in so long. It's ridiculous, really. Man, this is such good news. It does only appear to be the two wagons, but that's better than nothing, certainly. Welcome to Statarguskosh, and just be prepared to do a lot of trading. Hmm, <laughs> you know, we have the outpost liaison here, and I'm sure he wants to meet with Atir. He's just kind of hanging around in our library at the moment. Um, and I don't really know how we could safely get him in there with Atir. But I would really like to, just so we can get a rundown of what's going on with our civilization. Well, you know, 
If I unlock this door right here, the one that leads up to the tower, I don't think the vampires will try to run out, but I'm not sure. Um, hmm. First, I'm going to take the vampires and move them down underground. All right, and here they go. Very good. And now I'm going to unlock this door here. Let's see what happens. Door is unlocked. And for whatever reason, it looks like the outpost liaison is sunk into a depression. <laughs> Just sitting in this temple here. Oh, well, that's not great. Maybe the news he brings is worse than we thought. And in addition to that, it looks like some dwarves are trying to get up into the tower. Ugh. Just annoying. Oh, jeez. And on top of that, the vampires are trying to get out of the tower as well. Hooey. You know, I think I'm going to appoint a temporary mayor. This is not going to end up working very well, I don't think. So I'm going to relock this door. And uh, having a look here, I'm going to replace At here with... Hmm. Well... This uh, merchant here is extremely qualified for the position, and they go by the name Amos de la Sashas. Hmm, well, not that I want to give a merchant much power, but, well, I suppose if they're not doing anything else, I might as well, right? We have to get that news from the liaison. And it should also be noted that I would have made Id our mayor, but he is already serving as a militia commander as well, so I'd hate to put too much on his plate. And as I said, Amos is very qualified for the position, surprisingly. So, what the heck. Very exciting. I tell you, we're going to do a ton of trading with these guys. Big time. Oh, but not before our new mayor talks with the liaison. Let's see. Ah, greetings, dwarfs of Statarkus, gosh. It's been quite some time since we've paid you a visit. Now then, let's discuss your situation. I would like to once again offer you a position within the scraped chambers. As your small fortress stands, we cannot afford to offer you any aid. And on the same coin, it's hard for our great empire to benefit from the industriousness of your citizens. Please, I beg you, your dwarves must join the scraped chambers. In these dire times, we need each other. Well, it was kind of dicey not getting any trade wagons for those few years. I mean, I don't think it's the case, but if we did become a colony of the scraped chambers, then maybe we could hope for more reliable traders? I don't know. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You're right, Domas. I think it's time we joined. And now we have to select a Baron. And I think that Baron has to be at here. She has been our leader this whole time. So, yeah, let's do it. Ha! Fantastic news! You won't regret it, my friends. Ha! Ah, now then, on to the news from our realm. There is much to share. Oh, we gotta choose what we want for next year in the way of trade items. Alright, I think that'll about do it. Basically asking for a lot of everything. <laughs> very good. It was very nice to meet with you dwarves once more, but the time has come for me to take my leave. Farewell, Amos de Lair Sachas. I look forward to our meeting next year. And remember, our fortunes rise and fall together. Especially now. Take care. And that's that. Okay, well, we'll do some trading first, and then we'll take a look into that news. Although I am very curious. And I'm going to sell a bunch of uh, garbage. Like a lot of it. Let's see, we have some plant barrels here. Plants that we cannot brew into drinks and so are kind of useless. As well as a bunch of tattered clothing. And then we also have all these wooden spikes here that we took out of our trap hall. These things sell for a good amount. And let's see, from the traders we will take some metal bars and some drinks. And, hmm, well they really didn't bring a whole heck of a lot. That's a shame. I really hope they don't leave us hanging again. But we'll also pick up some armor and weapons, as well as a lot of clothing. I'm sure the dwarves are starting to get sick of wearing bristly wild boar leather leggings. Couldn't say I'd blame them. And you know, I think that's gonna about do it. And I will trade it a little bit more than I have to just to make sure they're happy. There we go. That should do it. And they are ecstatic with the trading. So we can expect a lot more next year. And you know what? Before we leave this screen here, I'm actually gonna offer them a bunch of these wooden spikes, separate from our trade. And that'll about do it. 100,000 value worth of products. Mostly wooden spikes, but also some miscellaneous, semi-useless plants. A true dwarven horde! Here you go! Just wonderful. You know, I'm starting to actually feel a lot more positive about the future now. As long as these wagons keep showing up anyways. And as far as that news goes, let's have a look. I'm very curious. Hmm, nothing too, too thrilling here, seemingly. Hmm, it looks like our civilization is aware that there are a couple of artifacts here in the fortress. All right. And then down here to the south, hmm, well, it says that in the early autumn of this year, 293, the army of no-so-cruel creep marched on construct spirals. A dwarven hillocks, I believe. 
and they also attacked Daub Towers, another Helix. Well, that's not good at all, though it seems like both these locations are still intact. Well, at least there's that. Damn goblins. And aside from that, everything is the same as it has been. Standard Worlds, a goblin fortress of about 3,000 individuals, is just a stone's throw to the north. To the west, we have Dark Mine, with a population of 2,000, and to our south, Worked Fondled, with a population of 1,000 goblins. And all three of these locations are former dwarven fortresses, too. Ugh, that is just nasty. <sighs> you know, we're trying to live a proper dwarven life now, but I'm starting to remember how impossible that might be. Our plans of a vampire fortress have come to a close, and there's not much else we could do about it now. Unless that Moses actually does figure something out. Hmm, not getting my hopes up though. That damn bumbling boar. He probably never knew what he was talking about, huh? Well, we could have really used some better information from these merchants. But I suppose if that's all they got, then uh... Hey, would you look here? More migrants. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five... Five more dwarves. That's pretty damn exciting. Mostly farmer types, but also a gem cutter. Awesome, I don't know why they're showing up all of a sudden. Certainly seems strange, but definitely not unwelcome. Gods know we can use some new dwarves in the fortress. If this keeps up and we stop losing so many dwarves, then we will be a proper dwarven fortress before long. We'll just have to hang in there. <laughs> well, anyways, it's currently the 2nd of Moonstone, 293, early winter, which means the Autumn Festival has come to a close. And now we have to get back to work, dwarves. There is still very much to do. Starting off small here, you can see this tiny enclosure at the bottom of our fortress pit, and this is going to be used for Kias. And we do have four fully tamed Kias right now, two male and two female, as well as a bunch of hatchlings, which is very exciting. I'm sure they'll make great pets for the fortress here. And this pen here is two Z levels tall, so they have plenty of room to fly around and stuff. Didn't want to be too cruel, you know? And if you have a look down this way here, you can see the Tower of Memories, a project that I'm growing ever more excited about. And looking at these surrounding towers, you can see the one at the bottom right anyways, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12 levels tall, and the other two are coming right along. They should be finished in no time. Oh, and it looks like we have some more migrants too. 16 new migrants. Wow, that's really something. Takes us up to 56 dwarves. Huh, kind of crazy, really. We're moving up. Anyways, back to the tower here. You can see the floors inside are all set now, for the most part anyways, and I am going to be building some walls in there, just for a little extra privacy when we do actually get dwarves living in here, if that's what we're still planning on doing, that is. Haven't quite decided. Remember, we were going to house vampires in these towers, but since that's no longer going to happen, yeah, I'm not too sure what we're going to end up doing with them. But really, I'd say the project I'm most excited about these days are the grand quartzite chambers being carved out underneath our fortress and which are nearing completion swiftly, might I add. We have a bunch of furniture in place, long rows of tables and chairs, and finely sculpted quartzite statues of honeybees. Doors are in place as well as pedestals. And right over this way here, we even have a mist generator that's not yet functioning, but it can be ready in a moment. The water will be drawn from up here in this higher cavern layer and then dumped out here, just a little side portion of the quartzite caverns. Very simple, but also effective. Hopefully. And now that this suite is basically completed, with just a few other touches to add, I think it's time that Atir springs her trap. We'll get word out to Moses promptly. Although that being said, strangely we've received no word from him in the past year or so. It certainly seems odd. Just hoping that boar man bastard hasn't caught on to our plans here. We can't let him get away. Atir's been a little obsessed lately with this whole trap and she's growing increasingly desperate to see Moses punished. She never wanted to become a vampire, and right now, and until the end of her days, she's going to exist as a monster due to his trickery. She cares for Stetarguskosh, and for the Scrape Chambers, and the thought of them all turning into vile Nazusheb is a bit disgusting to her. And so yes, she's been quite eager to see Moses again. Oh, hold up now. We have a bit of a commotion here. Over this way, at the Vampire Well, Somebody locked themselves in there. It's Moldy. Uh, this kid's been being a real pest lately. He just won't let go of the fact that we can't be vampires here in the fortress. As I said, the other dwarves have been trying to dissuade him from that madness. Wait a second, do you hear that? Is he pulling the lever? Moldaf, what are you doing? Stop this idiocy. Damn it, somebody has to get him out of there. He's still pulling that lever. Not that we care too much about that goblin. But those screams are just gut-wrenching. Come on, Moldath! The plan has failed. There's no sense in this. 
That damn dwarf. The screams, they've stopped. He's not pulling the lever anymore. Moldath! Come out of there, will you? You have to act sensibly. It's so quiet in there now. Is he alright? By Melville's wisdom. The well worked. We just needed more blood in there. You mad dwarf. And now he's running off into the fortress. He's crying out to the other dwarves. Rallying them. The well has worked. A bright new future for the dwarves begins today. We are the Nazu Sheb. And the future will be ours. <laughs> oh my god. This is amazing. Right here. Okay, now I had done a little bit of background testing. And it turns out we just needed a tiny bit more blood in that well. And... Yeah. It uh, actually seems to work exactly as intended. And I will tell you too, because it's been asked so many times, that the whole double-decker well thing actually does work. Just in case you were wondering. Would you take a look at our meeting hall? Damn man, what the hell? That really is something. Everyone in the fortress is now a massively powerful vampire. <laughs> wow. That was damn quick too. Which is good, one of my fears is that a couple of them would turn into vampires and then try to drink blood from other sleeping dwarves. But it was so quick it doesn't seem to have mattered at all. Moses' plan worked. And the Fortress Dwarves seem to have turned against Atir's Dwarven future idea. We are now embracing a vampiric future. A future in which we actually stand a chance fighting against the Demon King and his goblin armies. We've had more and more migrants showing up lately, which could mean more vampires too. Oh man, that's so good. Although... Something else interesting I noticed here. If we uh, take a look down the line here of all our new vampires... <laughs> wow. Kind of overwhelming, actually. Uh, we can see up here that Mafal, our former chief medical dwarf, the one who's a werehorse, is not a vampire because she's locked in that room by herself. And also, farther up here, we have Id Yuristvath Sith, who was our fortress leader for a very long time after the Nazu Sheb went up to the Tower of Memories. Now, I paused the game because I realized that he is the last one to drink out of that well. And keeping in mind that he is a sponsored dwarf, uh, Id here does not want to become a vampire. Both he and Atir seem to be on the same page, which is very interesting. Now, I'm not too sure what we're going to do exactly, because if he doesn't become a Nazu Sheb, he's going to be, well, sucked dry in a matter of days, I would think. But we're going to have to think of something quickly, because he is against it. We have to remember, too, that his wife is down here, and she's not going to become a Nazu Sheb either, because she is locked in his chamber by herself due to the fact that she's been infected by the Werehorse curse. And at the time being, those are the only two non-vampire dwarves in the entire fortress. Even the three children that they have here in the fortress are vampires, with the others being Lymol, their eldest daughter, who died quite a few years back due to not being able to create an artifact in time, and Silob, their oldest son, who's a militia captain, up in Waterkeeper to the north. I wonder what he would think if he knew what was going on here at Honeystoker. But a more important question is, what the hell is Id planning on doing now? Whatever he's planning, he's going to have to act fast. And what about new migrants? Do they run the risk of getting sucked to dry the instant they step foot in Honeystoker? And for that matter, what about Atir? What does she think about all this? With all the dwarves in the fortress turned into vampires, it seems like the hopes of a dwarven future are soon to be crushed. So many questions. Why are we suddenly getting so many new migrants? And the wagons too, for that matter. Just strange. And even stranger still. Where is Moses? We haven't heard from him in quite some time. Is he aware of our trap? Or maybe something's happened to him? Hmm, well, I'm afraid that these are questions that will have to wait until next episode. Well, my bearded bastards, I certainly hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I hope to see you next time here in Statargoosh Gosh, Honeystoker. And until then, you bearded bastards, <laughs>